Hey there everybody, Cape Joel back again for yet another trailer breakdown. We have the third, that's right, third trailer for Suicide Squad. It is entitled Blitz, and honestly at first I wasn't sure if I was going to cover this one or not. I figured I had pretty much said everything that I wanted to say about the movie in my last trailer breakdown, which you can check out in my handy dandy little breakdown playlist, but uh, this trailer came out last night as part of the MTV Movie Awards, and by God, it was filled with so much new, interesting and super cool footage. I, I really had no other recourse than to talk about it. So without further ado, let's hop right on into it. We see a shadowy governmental cabal of generals and other such suit people uh, talking about their fear of Superman, saying, you know, what what's stopping Superman from ripping the roof off the right White House right now and killing the president? And you know what? In any other universe, I would say these guys are totally overreacting, but in this brand new DC cinematic universe where Batman brands people and Superman Superman punches third world dictators through walls. I'm agreeing with shadowy government people. I'm totally on Team Waller. I agree. You guys, you guys gotta do something to protect yourself. You need a ragtag team of villains to protect you from these so-called morally bankrupt heroes. Uh, another interesting thing I picked up in the trailer, I'm sure I've mentioned this elsewhere, but it's uh, worth repeating. One of the guards at uh, Bell Rev, hey, it's Mad TV's Ike Barinholtz, everybody. You may remember him as the uh, crazy best friend in Neighbors. He, I always felt, was a very underrated comedy actor, and here he is in Suicide Squad playing what seems to be a more straightforward guard. I wonder if he'll have more going on because that seems like such such an odd casting choice for such a well-known comedic actor to play totally straight. I wonder I wonder what his interplay is going to be with the rest of the squad. I'm interested in that. Uh, we get a great shot of Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. <laughs> it's funny, if you've read the comics recently, uh, this week also saw the release of uh, Harley Quinn and the Suicide Squad uh, April Fool special, and it was that issue that's a really important issue because it saw Amanda Waller just more into her movie counterpart, and it saw the Suicide Squad team become the team from the movie, which honestly, you know what I've been saying forever, I wish Waller looked more like she did in the movie, so already the movie scores major points for me for actually impacting the comics I love in a meaningful way, so good on you guys. Ooh, next up we get a creepy room full of doctors and military personnel. You know, at first I thought this might be Arkham Asylum, but then I took a closer look. This uh, this has to be the moment where they put the bombs in their uh, in their heads, right? This has to be the part where they put the uh, subdermal nanobombs inside them, and oh, it looks wonderfully creepy and dank and everything, just like it should. Ooh, we get a nice uh, little shot here of the entire team suiting up, and we get to see more of Deadshot's regalia. A lot of, uh, a lot of religious stuff on his thing. He's got some Bible quotes on his gun, some Bible quotes on his collar. Uh, when we saw him just in civilian clothes, he had a big cross on him and everything. I guess this is all part of their attempt to try and soften Deadshot as a character. And be like, yeah, Floyd Lawton, he's a bad guy, but he has redeeming qualities, don't you know? And <laughs> speaking of suiting up, uh, when Harley Quinn puts on her outfit, yes, apparently that's the outfit they chose for them. Or more than likely, because this is a prison, this is them returning their effects to them as happens. Everybody from men to women to everyone in between just stop so look at Marco Robbie get dressed. Man, do they know what's going to be putting butts in seats. Man, do they know what's going to be selling them tickets. And they are putting Harley Quinn front and center in this movie. They are already priming her to be the breakout star of this. And you know what? I'm personally okay with that. I think I think that's all right. Ah, uh, we get some more stuff of uh, Flag going on here. You know, Rick Flag, a character I always enjoyed, a character who is missing from the comics currently, but a character who is going to be coming back now because of the movie. Yet again, another way in which the movie has influenced the comics in a meaningful way. And he makes no bones about it. You know, Suicide Squad, I am not your friend. I am not your partner. I am your handler. You will do as I say, or else I will put boots to asses, as they say. Uh, next up we have Slipknot, who, man, he has his own grappling hook tag. Jeez, Batman, you're not, you're suddenly not as cool or as interesting. This, this D-list villain has himself a grappling hook. Uh, I've said it before and I say it again, if I have to put money on anyone who I think is going to die first, it's going to be Slipknot. Interesting that we're actually seeing footage of him in the city as all the other trailers haven't shown much of him in the city. I still, I still hold fast to my theory that he's gonna die first is the thing. And if he dies, you, you all owe me a coat, vanilla or cherry please. Ah, uh, we get to see Katana getting very upset with Captain Boomerang, Jai Courtney, and why wouldn't you? You know, he's such a he's such an irascible character, that guy. Katana, as I've said before, kind of uh, operates an interesting place 
in this movie and on this team because Katana is usually shown to be a good guy and a hero and now she's with a team of villains and it seems like she's not getting along with them. It also seems like she's saying very little. I'm guessing she's like the silent badass of the crew. I know some people have theorized that she's maybe Flag's bodyguard to kind of watch his back amongst all the other criminals. That's interesting. Uh, we get a nice shot of, uh, of course, the trailers fill all the trailers we've seen so far, of helicopters attacking a city and everything and lots of explosions. We can see a blown out bridge, so I'm guessing this is the reasoning why the team just can't escape, because once they're in the city, the bridges are out and they're trapped, more or less. Kind of, uh, kind of gotten a no man's land feel going on for all you comic fans out there. Oh, no, I love this shot of the team all together on the helicarrier or helicopter or helitransport, whatever you want to call it, hella cool, on their way to the battle zone. I like they're all sitting in, they're all, like, you know, strapped down, everything, except for Katana, who, you know, is super, super casual, just hanging on tight and standing up and everything. And the fact that she's sitting so close to Flag also makes me think that, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe they're the two authorities in this one trying to rein in the rest of the team. Uh, that transport crashes in a huge fireball, but Harley Quinn is like, that was fun, can we do that again? I'm wacky, but in a good way. Uh, further on from there, we see them in a bar. Actually, we see a lot of footage of them in a bar throughout this trailer. Uh, they're just kind of hanging out. If I had to guess, this would probably be near, like, the middle of the movie or, like, near the final act because they all look kind of defeated, kind of chilling out and everything. Once again, note that at this point, there is no Sorceress and there is no Slipknot, which makes me think something's going on with them. I know I've theorized before and other people have theorized before that maybe they won't be on the team the whole time or maybe something will happen to them. Also, something I should note, it's around this time we get to hear the really awesome choice in music and that is Blitz by The Sweet, uh, Ballroom Blitz. I freaking love that song so much. It's easily like one of my top 10 favorite rock songs. These trailers have just been killing it with awesome rock music. The movie is going to be great. When's the soundtrack coming out? I want to listen to the soundtrack right now. Uh, f funny too, both uh, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen and now Blitz by The Sweet. Two songs that were in uh, Wayne's World. That's interesting. I bet you never thought Suicide Squad and Wayne's World would have a connection, but now they do. Uh, we get to see the squad fighting out with, I guess, our bad guys of the movie. Again, very little has actually been revealed of who or what they're fighting, but they are not human. Captain Boomerang smashes one of their heads, and it turns to dust. Also, look, a unicorn. Why, why does Captain Boomerang have a unicorn? Is he a supervillain and a brony on top of all else? Or is he just a big fan of the New Day? Uh... Further on there, we get another good look at Jared Leto, wearing his purple pimp coat, no shirt, and a bunch of bling. Uh, more interesting than Leto and getting a good look at him is behind him, you can see guys in costumes, uh, guys with masks and everything. We've seen what looked to be some crazy robberies going on with people wearing colorful, kooky costumes, in one case even wearing a Batman mask. I'm guessing this is connected to that scene or not long after it, by the looks of it. Uh, another great one, and I know this is great because this is what I'm going to be picking as the thumbnail for this video. Harley, just happy as can be at the base, brandishing her mallet. You know, it's funny, in the cartoon she used a mallet because that was like, it was like a Looney Tunes gag. We can do this because it's cartoons. And then that made the jump to comics with her, and now we are seeing it in live action. Her weapon of choice is a crazy clown mallet. Oh, but guess what? There's even more. Batman is in this trailer. We get to see more of the car chase that we've seen in other trailers. But more than that, we see what looks like Batman carrying a passed out Harley to the Batmobile. And I have to wonder, well, I don't have to wonder because I'm almost certain I know what happens here. Batman chases them. It goes really bad for Harley and the Joker. Joker leaves her hanging, as is the case. And that explains why she's in jail, but the Joker is not. Which I'm sure will also explain why she's mad at him. Uh, we get to see Batman with like a rebreather and everything going on, jumping in the water after Harley. I'm gonna guess Joker also tries to sacrifice her to save himself, and you know that would that would make a lot of sense. I truly wonder how much Batman's gonna be in the movie. I wonder how much or how long this segment is gonna be. Maybe five, maybe ten minutes, explaining how she got to jail. Uh, oh, I really like this one with Katana and more of the strange monster enemies they're fighting. We get a great look at the head of this one, and it looks very Cthulhu, very Lovecraft. It looks like he's covered in eyes. It's very freaking creepy. Very creepy. Uh, from there, we move on, and we see what I can only assume is the sorceress in a cave getting her magic powers, getting, you know, 
whatever, uh, the soul of the witch or whatever that's inside of her. Uh, I can only imagine because it looks like these monsters they're fighting and other stuff leads me to believe that the Suicide Squad is going to be fighting magical or paranormal threats. I'm going to guess she's tied to these paranormal magical threats at some point. Now, the real breakout of this trailer, and I did not think that would be the case, is actually El Diablo, of all people. He gets some great jokes in, in this trailer, in a trailer where everyone gets to be really funny and really quippy and really clever. He gets to show off his firepowers, and this trailer really hits home the idea that El Diablo is kind of the ace in the hole for the Suicide Squad, as he's the only one with real, honest-to-God, like, metahuman powers. He's not like a guy with a skin problem. He's not like a person who's just really good with guns or swords and anything. He can actually make impossible stuff happen. And, uh, yeah, he, he has a funny back-and-forth with Will Smith, who's like, No, man, I was just trying to get you there. <laughs> just trying to get you there, man. Uh, oh, we see a Harley flying through the air, assumedly through the crosshairs of Deadshot. Yeah, I can only imagine this is during the big action set piece of the movie where everything's blowing up and everyone's getting to do something cool. It's a nice shot. I like the crosshairs eye view. And, uh, yeah, with that, we're pretty much done the trailer there. That was Suicide Squad 3 Blitz, and by, wow, I just, man, I didn't think they'd be able to top the last one. I didn't think they'd be able to top the Bohemian Rhapsody trailer. This, this one looks like a winner. This one looks like a home run. I think this is going to make a lot of people very happy. I'm already happy with the trailer. I cannot wait for the movie. Uh, August cannot come soon enough for this. It's it's going to feel good to be bad. It's going to feel good to be bad with the Suicide Squad. And with that, everyone, I will bring to an end yet another trailer breakdown. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, subscribe, favorite, do all that other stuff. And if you like videos like this, uh, I started a Patreon earlier this week. You can find it down in the description of the video if you would like to check that out and maybe support future breakdowns and future videos like this. You would be doing me a real solid. So until next time, everyone, Kate Joel out.